bring them with this trailer. Uh, can you just talk about how you even came up with the concept of it? Yeah, for sure. I was going to Utah State. I just graduated. I was in their outdoor product design and development program. Um, it's pretty much a program where um, they pretty much make students ready for this type of an industry. And I've always been into off-roading and stuff and the overland type of stuff. And I really wanted a trailer um, that I could use as kind of a base camp because I've got the rooftop tent on the truck. But when you're just staying somewhere for a while, it's really annoying to set it up every day. And then I've got a wife and a small kid and it's just kind of nice to, to have a place to put them where they can chill and it's a relaxing place. And so I wanted to build one of these for a while and for my senior project, I decided, you know, it'd be a great opportunity to, to get one built. So I, I had the chance of meeting you and talking to you yeah. the other day and you told me this came in your whole build at around 2000. Yep. Yeah. Well, $2,000. $2,000. So yep. how did you keep the cost down on this? I think this yeah. is something people would love to yep. know. So this may be the bit of information that might convince you to build your own trailer. And that is Brigham built this trailer in less than four weeks. And he did all this while going to school full time with a job and while raising a family. And, and that $2,000 is with crappy wood prices right now. Um, and so the biggest thing I had to do is a lot of this stuff, you're really going to have to hit up like your local classifieds, your Facebook marketplace, um, and just be looking and be prepared to kind of wait and find the stuff that you need. So the trailer, I actually, I was planning on building this a couple years ago. So I found the trailer frame itself for 50 bucks um, on a local classifieds. Um, it was just in an old farmer's backyard. I had to clean it up a ton, do a bunch of stuff to it. Um, I actually ended up welding in a lot of support cross braces inside there. Um, just so the, the floor of the trailer is nice and stout. And then I added on the entire front box that we'll look at in a second, um, as well as like a telescoping tongue on the trailer um, and just a couple things like that. So that saved me a ton of money because trailer frames are super expensive. And even if you're going to build it yourself, metal is expensive. Also wheels and tires, those I found on local classifieds as well. Um, the wheels mounted on the tires. 50 bucks for four of them. So I've got two spares. That makes sense. So yeah, give us a walk through of this thing. Yeah. Hey guys, my name is Drew. I'm the guy behind the camera in this video, but typically my family is out taking small camper trailers throughout the state of Alaska, helping you to, you know, just some tips and tricks to have a more simple and gratifying camping experience. Please subscribe if you want to see more of these videos, but let's get right back into Brigham's build. I just wanted to say hi to all the new folks out there. So a couple other things I did to really save money was windows. Um, I went around to a bunch of local RV places, RV repair, repair shops, and was just asking if they had used windows. And so I was able to find, get both of my windows, and this is an emergency window. So this one will, this one will pop up like this um, to give me airflow. And then my other window's a 50-50 split, so it just slides halfway open. Um, and I think I paid like 80 bucks for both where they're normally about like 300 bucks each. So that's another big money saver. Um, the door, doors are like 300 bucks. And so being able to build my own, um, that was just a big cost saver. So, and it just kind of depends. Like if you're comfortable doing it, then great. Um, and if not, you know, buying a uh, pre-made door is a good option too. And then I would say kind of one of the last um, big money saving things I did is I actually work for a local garage door company and uh, the whole entire trailer um, is insulated with recycled garage door insulation. So it's literally <laughs> like that. It's the perfect width for a two by two because this the whole frame construction is built out of two by twos and it fits literally perfect in between them. So makes it nice and solid inside. And what so. kind of surprised me too, so you build this with sticks, but yet the weight came out surprisingly low. Yeah. So how much did this trailer weigh in at? Yeah, so it's only about 800 pounds. Um, I was honestly kind of surprised because I thought it was going to be a lot heavier than that. Um, and one day we were goofing around and my brother went up to this corner right here and just 
I mean, he just lifted the trailer up and I was like, holy crap, it's gotta be lighter than I thought. <laughs> um, and so weighing it and stuff, yeah, it's about 800 pounds, you know, that's without adding everything else into it. And so. that's impressive for an overland build like this. Yeah. Like this is a pretty beefy setup. Yeah. And what's it coming in? It's a five by eight or what is the? Yeah, so it's, the trailer itself is about five feet wide. The bed's slightly smaller just because of wall thickness. Um, and then the length of the bed itself, it's a seven foot long bed. Um, the box itself is eight foot to the rear. And then if you add um, this section, you're just under, you know, 10 feet total length for the box. That's so That's great. So not super long. And I'm seeing you got a fridge in here, huh? Yeah, so I guess this was, this was another one of those um, money saving things. So um, drawer sliders are like heavy duty drawer sliders are kind of expensive as well. Um, and so because I work for a garage door company, I just use some garage door track and rollers and like that stuff is made to hold thousands of pounds. So it's plenty strong enough. Um, and that's something you can actually, I mean, you could find that from like a local garage door company if you wanted. Honestly, that'd be something they'd have on in stock. So. But yeah, this, this front box, I really wanted the integrated box um, up front just because it gives me the storage for the cooler. The other side is all storage and it's where I have my battery set up. Um, and so it just kind of gives me a place to tuck stuff, you know. That's a pretty for, big for box. Then. So there's a whole other side when we go around there mm -hmm. holding stuff. Oh, yeah. that's great. Yep. So, yeah, so that's this side. Um, and then we kind of come back to the kitchen area. This is one of my favorite spots. Um, again, like the reason I built this trailer is I love going off-roading. And if you have a huge trailer, you can't really take it to places you want to go. And the main reason you go out into the outdoors is to spend time outside. And so I kind of wanted this incorporated, you know, outdoor kitchen area. Um, but also trying to do it on a budget and save money. And I made it to where everything I do um, can be upgraded in the future. So for right now, I've got a really basic water system. Um, you've kind of got this, this little spot right here where you can have all the counter space you want. Um, and if you pull that down, you've got some storage down in that area. Um, and I've got a collapsible sink that fits down in there. And your sink can go right there. Um, I've got a big seven gallon water tank that's got a spout on it right here and you can just run your water off that. Oh, that's, I've never seen anybody do this. That's a really neat yeah. design because typically you're seeing the water down here mm -hmm. coming into something lower. Yep. But this makes sense from like, a, like it's, yeah. it, it's comfortable. Yeah. And then this design, I don't know if you guys can see this on the video. It's like, uh, he's, well, how would you explain this? This has some angle to it. Yeah. So when I was designing the rear kitchen, um, I really tried to put a lot of thought into it because the biggest thing is I, I wanted to be able to fit full size plates um, and pans if I wanted and to just take and build a shelf straight across, it really kind of eliminates a lot of this usable space. Yeah. Um, and so I kind of figured this out just try, kind of doing it on my own, just working through it. And I figured, you know, if I put angles in on each side, it gives me a lot of space in here to be able to put large round objects. Um, you know, and then obviously I don't need as much right here. Yeah. And so this kind of just opens up this entire area. And I think it kind of gives it a cool look. So. I think it does too. It's like something I can tell I'm not going to be able to capture in video, but like yeah. in real life, this mm -hmm. is, I mean, this is something I could see big brands integrating into their yeah. build because you've basically reclaimed a ton yeah. of space here. This is, feels so open and airy. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of the neat thing about building your own teardrop or square drop. You're building it for you. Like yep. everything about yep. this is designed around who you are. Yep. You're not having to step into somebody else's design. Yeah, it's true. And then uh, another thing. So with the water, if you pull it out, now you've got a pass through window oh, I love into this. the cab, you know? So if you want to wake up early and cook your wife some breakfast, you know, breakfast in bed, hand it across, <laughs> you know? Oh, that's good. I love the pass through. So. It's kind of nice, um, but yeah, and then that just slides right in there. Um, yeah, and then kind of other things, I wanted to have 110 power back here, um, as well as USBs. 
Um, and so I've got a couple of these little fans that I can just kind of run and they're, they're actually pretty strong and super efficient. And so um, just kind of gives you a little bit more utility in this yeah. area. Um, so another thing I really wanted, just because it gives you more space, um, is I kind of wanted to build, obviously you see these a lot on a lot of people's vehicles and stuff and trailers, but just a little easy, super simple fold down table that just gives you a little bit of extra real estate to be able to, you know, put a cutting board on it or a single burner stove or something like that. And it uh, gives you a little bit more space that way. Um, I guess in another feature, that might be useful if people are thinking about building one. So originally I was gonna do a one piece door um, and I kind of decided when you're building a, a wood framed trailer, it's kind of hard. You could get some really beefy hinges, but it puts a lot of stress on hinges to have a door that large. Okay. Um, and so I decided to do the two piece and you can actually find these locks on Amazon. They're for um, like two piece household doors and they go down into the floor and up into the ceiling. But essentially, if you're building one of these, um, you can have your flange right here that that door will hook into. But these um, just tighten really well and they make that door super sturdy. So it gives it a really good um, like foundation for this door to latch in and it's not gonna go anywhere. Yeah. So just if people are maybe thinking of ways to do that, so. And then I'm seeing on here, yeah. What is what did you put for the coating? So I, I'm noticing oh, yeah. like paint in the inside of the interior. Yep. But yeah. then once I'm hitting your exterior, the paint is changing into something else. What am I seeing here? Yeah. So, so like I said, the trailer is a two by two frame construction, um, fully insulated, and then it's got quarter inch of plywood on each side of that, on the inside and outside of the trailer. Um, and then I really wanted the trailer to be super waterproof so I just didn't have to worry about it because um, aluminum panels are really expensive um, and so what I ended up doing is just looking into a lot of research on like people that build their own teardrops um, and I found something called poor man's fiberglass um, it's something that a lot of shipbuilders have used in the past so you know it's really waterproof in that aspect if they're out on a boat using it you know um, but essentially it's tight bond to wood glue and you coat the trailer in that, and then right after you apply it, you put canvas over it, and then you apply the wood glue on top and you squeegee it all in. And it's it's really similar to the way you do a fiberglass layup, just one layer, obviously, of canvas. Um, and I mean, it's turned out, it's given the trailer um, kind of a cool rough texture on the outside. And Yeah, it looks um, really good. It's held up super good so far. And then obviously you coat it with a bunch of paint afterwards, but. And then how about ease of use? Like, was that a hard process? So honestly, I was a little bit worried at first doing it because something I have noticed on a lot of the trailers that I saw, when they do poor man's fiberglass, they will do the sides first and then they'll do their top pieces and they'll wrap them over and you kind of get like this kind of ugly line that you see along the side. Yeah, I've and seen I, it. I really, really didn't want that. Um, and so trying to figure out how to do it without getting that line, I wrapped the sides and took them about two to three inches over the top. And then this top piece comes right to this edge. And if you just keep it right on the edge and you can take a razor blade and just cut it and then kind of work it and kind of smash it down with the glue. Yeah. The edge almost kind of becomes invisible and yeah. you still have a ton of overlap on yeah, top. Yeah, it looks great, really clean. And then we've got the box up here. My battery's right there. I just kept the power system really simple um, and I could easily upgrade it at any point. Um, I think so my whole entire power system, I probably only have like a hundred bucks into it. It's a super deep cycle lead acid battery. Um, I was able to find it um, again on like a local classifieds. Being able to get that at a good price, um, the inverter up in the box, um, just keeping it simple and there's not really a whole lot in this trailer I really need to run yeah um, besides lights and charging phones and cameras and stuff like that and so so far it's been really good I haven't felt any need to, to upgrade any of it and like you said there's room to expand so if you wanted to put a charge controller in there mm -hmm. and you could throw yep. solar panels up here yep. and yep yeah and, and the plan is eventually 
you know, I didn't really want to jump the gun on things because I, I've kind of wanted to test it out, see what works, what I want to add. Um, I know eventually I'm going to build a roof rack for it um, and throw the rooftop tent up there. Eventually it's going to get solar just so it's, it's a little more self-contained. Um, but like us, I can tell you've realized quick, you don't use much power out there. Yeah. And a simple teardrop yeah. like this is really all you need. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, and in, unless you're running like an AC unit or something like that, that pulls a lot. Yeah. Like uh, this thing on one battery charge will probably last me like three full weekend trips, you know? Oh, that's so like perfect. Yeah. probably a whole week, you know, just out yeah. doing stuff. So we've got a trip coming up and we want to bring the bikes. And so I'm, I'm kind of experimenting still. So what I'm thinking I'm going to do, I've just got this bolted on um, with U-bolts right now. But what I'm thinking I'll do is um, weld on a hitch receiver mount right here. And then when this folds up, I can just slide my bike rack in there and put the pin through it. Oh, yeah. And then the bike rack, I can either put it on the truck or on the trailer. And then obviously you can't use the telescoping tongue right now with it on there. But when the bike rack is off, the tongue will shorten and it'll lengthen. You could pull it out if you're worried about, you know, if you want to put it in a garage and you want to save as much space as possible. I'm making him hop in just so we can get an idea of size here. Yeah, so it's actually pretty spacious in here. Um, and that's something I wanted. So right now, me and my wife sleep in here and then our little 18 month old girl. Um, and it's been plenty good. Um, some of the things I wanted to do is like I said earlier, it's a seven foot long bed. So it's pretty long. Um, I kind of made it, I needed to make the kitchen area so that I'd have room for my feet down here. Um, and then back in there, I split that rear 45 degree angled spot. So I've got kind of an opening where you can put blankets or whatever, just tuck them up in there and they're out of the way. Um, and then with the shelf, kind of my theory behind this, cause it comes at an angle, um, is obviously I had to do that cause this window goes all the way to that spot. Um, but it's been really nice to have this cause a lot of people have cupboards in theirs. Mm -hmm. But most of the time when we go out, we just fill a duffel bag with clothes. And so when we hop in here, we just throw our duffel bags in here when we're driving and then we just throw them up on here, you know, and then we can just pull clothes out of yeah, them or easier whatever. access. And it looks cool too, like the slope on that. It's really neat. Yeah, and so, it, you know, it gives you a smaller area over there for charging phones or whatever, small stuff. And then you can just stack bags over here. Um, it's got a vent. Um, your 110 power and then I've got three USBs over in that corner for charging cameras, phones, you know, whatever. How about the tiny lip at the top? Are you using yeah. it for anything? Yeah, so this is this is also just a little tiny shelf I wanted to incorporate in here. Um, part of it helps hold the water up right here and then the rest of it is just for phones, you know, little yeah. stuff like that where you can just throw them up there when you're sleeping. Um, and then for to make cheap curtains, um, I just got a little bit of uh, metal cable um, and just crimp the ends and then um, I actually found it a lot cheaper. I was going to go buy fabric and make them, um, my curtains, and it's actually, it's way cheaper. Just go to Walmart and buy blackout curtains and then just customize them to That's your That's how size. we do ours as well. Yep. yep. It's because fabric's so expensive nowadays. Um, and then in here, something I really wanted. Um, I've got a cutoff switch for the inverter on the battery. Um, so when I flip this off, I get no draw at night off the inverter because the inverters will have draw if they're on, even if nothing's being powered. That's a good one. Um, but my USBs never turn off because they're directly wired to the battery itself. And this is a little battery monitor you can get on Amazon. They're like, I think like 14 bucks. But this is, I mean, this is kind of a game changer. You kind of have to have it. And it just gives you battery percentage, voltage. Because with those deep cycle batteries, you don't really want to go below 50%. Yeah. Or it starts hurting them. So, and then, yeah, it's just got lighting in here. You've got your interior light switch. My exterior one is up there. Exterior, right out here. So, but yeah, it's been, it's been nice in here. Um, like I said, having the inch and a half insulation, it stays plenty warm in here you know when it's cold outside and uh, honestly stays a little cool in here when it's warm you know so
Uh, well, thanks nice. for sharing this build with us, Brigham. And I probably should, where are we at today? What is this? Yeah, so this is the Outdoor Adventure Expo in Salt Lake City, Utah. Um, there's a lot of sweet trailers here, vehicle builds, um, all sorts of cool stuff.